If you had to choose one game to play for the rest of your life, what would it be? Everyone will most likely come up with a different answer, but what connects all of these answers together is the amount of replay value there is to a game. This will most likely rule out any linear story experiences because of the repetition you would come across after 10, 20, or even 30 playthroughs. I absolutely love God of War 2018. I played it for the first time around a month or two ago, and I'd play it again in a heartbeat, but I'd imagine I'd begin to get tired of it or at least find myself wanting something different after, say, 15 playthroughs. Same thing goes for Doom Eternal, one of, if not the greatest first-person shooters I've ever played, but it would be difficult to imagine playing only that game for the rest of my life. Usually when answering this question, people are going to go after a game that gives you a different yet familiar experience every time. This can be found in sports games like FIFA or 2K, and these games could be a potential answer, especially if you're a big fan of the respective sport. It can also be found in competitive online multiplayer games such as League, Warzone, or Overwatch. Perhaps you choose a more open-world role-playing game like Minecraft, World of Warcraft, or GTA RP. No matter your choice, there is one attribute that bind all of these games together. They all have extremely high replay value. There is enough variety in the day-to-day -day gameplay that leaves enough for the player to want to come back and refuses to make itself feel repetitive. Fortnite has mastered this by constantly updating their maps and what kind of weapons they allow in-game. However, there is one game that I feel has the most replay value of any game I've ever played, and I would even go so far as to call it infinitely replayable. This game is the 2014 indie darling, The Binding of Isaac. Quick summary for anybody who's unfamiliar. The Binding of Isaac is a game made by Edmund McMillan and Florian Himsel. It was originally released as a Flash game in 2011, and then remade in 2014. Isaac is a roguelike, characterized by dungeon crawl style gameplay, procedurally generated levels, or floors as they're called in Isaac, and of course, permanent death. Checkpoints don't exist in Isaac. Death will result in you losing all progress and having to start over from the very beginning. Games of Isaac are referred to as runs, with any run lasting from 30 minutes to all the way up to over an hour to complete. Throughout your run, you defeat bosses and collect items that can range from bad to completely useless to basically winning the entire run if you get them. Through the accumulation of these items by finding them in item rooms, purchasing them in shops, defeating bosses, or doing deals with the devil, your character, or build, grows stronger as you descend floors. Simply having a lot of items in the game is nice, but the magic of Isaac comes from its synergies. By combining items, you can create synergies in your run that make your character stronger than the sum of its parts. Synergies can make bad items good, while also having the ability to literally kill you if you pick up the wrong two items. It's up to your IQ of the game to choose what items to add to your build and what items to leave alone. Now that you have a baseline understanding of the game, let's talk about replayability. According to the most credible source on the entire internet, Wikipedia defines the factors that influence replay value in a game as extra characters, secrets, alternate endings, music, graphics, gameplay, dynamic environments, challenging AI, a wide variety of ways to accomplish tasks, and a rich array of assets. If you have any experience playing The Binding of Isaac, you'll know that Isaac greatly excels in not some of these qualities, not most of these qualities, but every single quality listed in this definition. Extra characters? As of the most recent DLC, there are 34 different playable characters each with their own unique playstyle and strategies you have to follow in order to beat the game. You can't play base Isaac the same way that you would play Azazel, and you can't play Azazel the same way you'd play the Tainted Forgotten. And this can be said for every single playable character in the game. Secrets? There are tinted rocks, crawl spaces, black markets, as well as secret rooms, super secret rooms, and ultra-secret rooms found on every floor that can strategically be used to turn the tide of a single run. Alternate endings? There are 22 different endings 
only achievable by completing specific challenges over the course of your run and defeating a specific boss tied to each ending. Music? The music group Ridiculin has crafted a soundtrack that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most iconic soundtracks in gaming. The sound design of the enemies and items instantly immerses you in the world of fighting anthropomorphic poop. Graphics? The graphics are highly stylized and lend perfectly to the arcade-style gameplay. Edmund McMillan's masterful artistic hand is filled with detail and makes every floor variation and enemy unique. The charred embers on the wall and the smoke-filled room of burning basement, or the leaking rocks and water dripping from the ceiling of the flooded caves, offers a completely unique atmosphere to their non-variant counterparts. Dynamic environments? Every floor in Isaac is procedurally generated using seeds. These seeds allow for more than 4 billion unique games that you can play. This means that if you were to do 1,000 unique runs of Isaac every single day, it would take over 10,000 years to play every possible seed. These dynamic environments generate a unique layout of over 100 different unique rooms it can choose from on every floor. These rooms range from common to extremely rare, so rare that I still encounter brand new rooms that I've never seen before, even after 900 hours. This combination of generated floors composed of random rooms allow each floor of a run to be a unique experience that's impossible to predict. Challenging AI? Every base enemy in Isaac has a unique attack pattern that you can only learn over hours of playing against them. This is further emphasized with the bosses. Learning which enemies deal contact damage, tear damage, explosive damage, or special attack damage is critical to predicting and dodging their attacks. What's nice is that every enemy has a unique tell in order to project what attack they are about to use. This eliminates any feeling of cheap hits and puts all the blame on the player for not reacting fast enough to the attack. Well, every enemy except for Delirium, who just decides to do random shit whenever he feels like it. A wide variety of ways to accomplish tasks? There is a lot of risk-reward that comes from clearing floors, especially the first few floors on the run. Do you risk your last bomb on Basement 1 at a chance to find a secret room? Or do you save it for the next floor, where you may be able to get some coins to use in the shop? Do you use your last key on the shop or that gold chest, knowing you aren't guaranteed to get it back on the next floor, locking you out of your next free item? Do you take a devil deal or refuse it to open up a chance of getting an angel deal on the next floor? This risk-reward metagame is something pro Isaac players do constantly in their runs. You begin to get a feeling of what risks are worth taking and what risks aren't worth taking. Sinvicta, a popular Isaac streamer and YouTuber, is known for being completely anti-pill on nearly every run that he plays, holding the opinion that the risk of taking a bad pill far outweighs the chance of it being a good pill. The difference in risk tolerance from player to player allows for multiple different playstyles depending on how experienced you are with the game as well as the strength of your current run. A rich array of assets? There are over 700 items featured in Isaac, and that doesn't include the almost 200 trinkets and over 150 consumables. There are 336 unique enemies to fight. Some of these enemies also have a chance of spawning one of 34 champion variants that have special attributes which make them harder to kill. This means that a single enemy has 35 different variants that you can encounter. Let's assume that only half of the 336 enemies featured in the game have the ability to spawn as champions. This turns our original 336 into over 6,000 possible enemies that you can encounter on a single run. And these are just the base enemies. There are 131 unique bosses found while playing the game. And these bosses also have their own unique champion variants. While the bosses only have about one or two champion variants associated with them, this brings our total boss number up from 131 to 189 potential bosses that you can fight. All of these assets, on top of the aforementioned 34 unique playable characters, creates a game with the richest array of assets I've ever experienced. Finally, the gameplay. Everything I've mentioned before now will have been for nothing if the gameplay loop is not engaging and leaves the player craving for another run. For an untrained eye, 
Isaac's gameplay can seem very simple. After all, it's a twin-stick shooter with only a few additional buttons for dropping bombs, using consumables, and using active items. It's only with experience do you truly realize how high Isaac's skill ceiling is. A lot of this ceiling comes from Isaac's movement, whether it be dodging multiple unique attacks from a variety of enemies in the same room, knowing how close you can be to a certain enemy while remaining safe, or positioning yourself to proc specific attacks from bosses. Isaac's movement allows for a high skill ceiling that takes hours to master. So what's the point of playing over and over again? Well, each character comes with a post-it note to complete. There are 12 completion marks on the post-it note that require you to beat certain bosses. These bosses include Mom's Heart, Isaac, Blue Baby, Ultra Greed, Satan, The Lamb, Mega Satan, Boss Rush, Mother, The Beast, Hush, and Delirium. Some of these challenges can be completed in the same run, but most of them require a dedicated run just to fight that specific boss. You can't fight Blue Baby and the Lamb in the same run, so it requires another playthrough. And Ultra Greed requires you to play Greedier, an entirely separate game mode from the normal game. Even if you play perfectly, the minimum amount of runs you need to complete a post-it note is five. But even the best Isaac players will tell you that is nowhere near a realistic goal. It will take you at least 50 to 100 runs to complete a post-it note, and probably over 150 to 200 if you're new to the game. The incentive for completing these challenges is that completing each completion mark grants you a new item to use in your next run, most of which are very powerful. So congratulations! You've grinded all of the completion marks for Isaac. Now all that's left to do is do it again for 33 more characters, all with increasing difficulty. You thought Delirium was hard on Azazel with Flight and Mini Brimstone? Now try it with the Tainted Lost, where taking any hit of damage instantly kills you. And after you're done with 100%ing the base game, there's 45 unique challenges waiting for you with special game modifiers that give you even more strict playstyles and rules you must abide by. And after all that, after you've put at least 500 hours in the game, getting all challenges, all secret challenges, collecting every item, winning hundreds of runs, you're finally rewarded with this. Your save file lets you know that you haven't beaten the game. In fact, you're not even close. To truly beat The Binding of Isaac, you must do everything that I just mentioned three times over on each and every save file. Only then are you rewarded with what's known as Infinity Percent Completion. Now when you log into the game, instead of being greeted by the iconic drawing of Isaac sitting alone saying press start, you're now greeted with a fat Isaac that tells you to stop playing, with a special artwork that spans across all three save files, letting you know you are one of the most elite Isaac players to ever touch the game. This is an achievement that will take even the greatest Isaac players thousands of hours to fully accomplish. I remember when my friends would ask me why I continue to play the game, if I've beaten it hundreds of times over. I just remember laughing to myself thinking, beating the game a hundred times isn't even scratching the surface. However, the title of this video is Infinite Replayability, and over an infinite amount of time, you are guaranteed to eventually reach the coveted infinity percent at some point, no matter how long it takes. Do you stop playing at that point? You can always delete your save files and begin anew, but there is one aspect of the game that I haven't touched yet, and that is the win streak counter. After doing everything possible the game has to offer, there is still the allure of an Eden streak. Unlike other characters who spawn with base stats and the same item every time, Eden is a character whose stats, starting item, and active item is randomized every run. This mechanic, along with the randomized seeds, create a truly random experience for every new run you play. Your new goal following Infinity Percent is to continue a win streak without dying for as long as possible. And this challenge is truly infinite. There is no cap to this win streak, 
allowing for infinite playthroughs and always another win to chase. If it wasn't already obvious, The Binding of Isaac is my favorite game ever made. I think Edmund McMillan and Florian Himsel, as well as the rest of the team in Nikalis, who helped with the development of its three incredible DLCs, have crafted a masterpiece. And it makes sense why it's largely considered one of the most influential indie games of the past decade. It's a game that you can play for 30 minutes or five hours and not feel like you're stopping in the middle of what you're doing. So if all of a sudden every game that I owned and every game that I could possibly own disappeared from the earth only to leave me with The Binding of Isaac, I really wouldn't mind because I know that The Binding of Isaac is one of the only games in existence that is truly infinitely replayable.